Hello, um, I'm going to be uh, walking through the process of, of creating a documentation library for JavaScript. Um, this is an idea I've had for a while, um, but I kind of held off on it. I, I've been very, very frustrated <laughs> with the state of documentation in JavaScript. Um, incredibly frustrated. This is something that's come up at work. This is something that's come up in my personal projects just over and over and over again. Um, writing jo uh, JavaScript documentation is an awful experience right now. Um, and there are a lot of different reasons for that that I'll, I'll sort of get into as, as we program. But, um, so I've been thinking for a while, like, okay, could I build a documentation engine that would just be better than the, the current solutions that are out there? And um, I'd held off because I didn't want to deal with website generation, and I wanted something that was a heck of a lot more flexible than JS Doc. So, like, with JS Doc, this is kind of easy. You just stick the stuff in a template, and you spit out your site. Um, but I wanted something that would be more um flexible that I could I could do more with and um uh ultimately uh what I found out very very recently is I I sort of looked at the websites I was building and the packages I was building and I realized like I almost never ever want a documentation generator to actually generate html I want it to just spit out a json object that I can take advantage of uh, so that's what we're going to be building, is a very, very lightweight, very, like, extremely flexible uh, documentation generator that spits out raw JSON, and that's it. Uh, so I'm going to take a second and go through some setup, and um, we're going to get started. I've got some demo files, uh, or not demo files, but sort of demo files that I've been just working on just as proof of concept type things. Uh, but this is going to be the as close to the official one. Like this will this will be what I eventually throw up on npm. Uh, so let's pull open a shell and um, make a final place for this to to sort of rest. Um, yeah, all right. The working title that I'm going with for this is Dormouse. That's not permanent. Um, I haven't really thought about names. Um, and then we're just going to npm init this. Um, that is not what I wanted. There we go. There we go. Uh, we're going to call this 0 0.1. Um, and we're going to fill in the rest of this stuff later. Um, I'll go over this in a second. But my entry point is not going to be index.js. It's going to be under a node modules folder. Um, and that will become obvious why very, very soon. Uh, this, is, this is generally just like a much cleaner way to build npm packages i i don't know why more people don't take advantage of it i i suspect maybe they just don't know about how how package uh paths work in node um uh node src slash tests uh gonna be using distilled for testing And this is going to be MIT, and yeah, that looks fine. Cool. All right, so I want to pull open this package.json, and that looks cool. All right, uh, let's dedicate this to the shell just so I have a re uh, just so I have a um, constant shell to come back to. And this will be my testing layout. Uh, so first things first, we're going to install. This is 
probably going to move to a new place. All right, cool. Um, and that pulls in the proper checklist. All right, cool. This is also, I guess, be a good demo of Distilled, which is another testing library that I, I work on. Um, and I use that for just very, very quickly doing testing. Uh, cool. SRC, no modules. Uh, doormouse.js. Yes, I want to be in here. Um, I want another testing directory. Test slash doormouse.js. Cool. Um, so let me sort of walk through um, how this is supposed to look and how this is supposed to work. Um, I want a very, very, very simplistic syntax here. Um, So we're just going to stick this inside here. I want a very, very simplistic syntax. I want to have arbitrary blocks of text. I don't want to deal with class names. I don't want to deal with modules. I don't want to. I don't even want to deal with functions. Um, JavaScript is an extremely fluid language. You can do a lot of crazy stuff. You can do var x equals object dot create string, and then you can be like x dot proto equals um, a new object right after that, and you wouldn't really do this. This is bad style of coding, but the the point of a documentation generator is that it can, in addition to being like a clarifying tool, it can also clarify bad code. So JavaScript is extremely flexible, and you get JS doc and you get ES doc, and they basically have a billion tags, and half of them are stuff that they made up that don't even exist in JavaScript. Like class, class doesn't exist in JavaScript. Um, there's no there's almost no reason to have it as a tag. Um, even with the new keyword, it's it's still just dumb. Uh, so I don't I don't want to deal with any of that. I want arbitrary blocks of text that I'm attaching to objects. Um, so what that's going to look like is a little like this. Um, so I'm just sticking random stuff in here. It's going to be a markdown, and then I just want to give this an ID. So I'd be like, my ID. And you'll notice that the prefixes to the line, which traditionally in markdown get ignored, or not in markdown, traditionally in documentation generators like JSDoc, these get ignored. Um, they're not going to get ignored now. Um, everybody uses these. I don't ever see libraries that aren't prefixing every line of a block comment. So as long as we have them, like it would be really, really elegant if they're part of the syntax because then you don't need to worry about this kind of crap, which is what the current JS doc stuff does, which is like at prop thing. And then it needs to recognize that this is not a line of markdown. This is something else. So it's got to start parsing and then stop parsing after the fact. Yeah, so... You stick your property right there or whatever. Um, so I'm going to give this an ID. Um, I think this is still something that, that I'll be exploring throughout the weekend to, to sort of figure out like if this is a good idea or not. Um, I think IDs want to be globally unique. Um, 
it would be trivial to make it so that like you could reuse an ID or you could append additional stuff to it later. I'm not sure that would be useful in any meaningful way. Um, but what this this will be mean that this block of text is completely divorced from code. We're not doing any code analysis um, because I think that's just a terrible idea. Um, this is getting indexed by this block of code. So at any point when I get my node structure back at the end of this, I'll be able to um, refer to this node by the index. Um, I can also add arbitrary properties. Um, so let's say I do want to use that class. You can still do that. Um, I can still do that. That works fine. That works completely, completely fine. Uh, so what this will do is it will create a blank node and it will give that node an ID of class, and then it will link this block of text to that node. So what I'll end up with is something that looks a little like this. And what that allows me to do is like, let's say that I add another class later on. I can link that to the same thing because uh, these will be basically shared. So I could then later on come down here and say um, at class and what that will spit out is something that looks like this. So what's the advantage of this? Um, this gets indexed, same as everything else. So if I want to look up all of the classes that are attached to this, I grab the class node, and I just look to see everything that's attached to it. And everything that's attached to it is a class. Um, and I can build any arbitrary thing that I want. I don't just have to use this for classes. I could also be like, at deprecated. I could also be like, at foobar. This is completely arbitrary. Um, and that is incredibly important because depending on the type of library that you're building, very often you have different terms and different kinds of terminology and you want to be able to group methods and, and properties in unique kind of novel ways. This is not like a nice to have. This is basically what every single JavaScript library worth its salt does. Um, it is very hard to de describe something like jQuery using a class system. Uh, it is very hard to describe... I mean, unless, unless you have something that's incredibly straightforward, like Lodash, where you basically just have a collection of methods, and even Lodash would like to be able to group its methods together arbitrarily. Um, even Lodash would love to be able to just randomly put a tag on stuff that was like, hey, this method has side effects, this method doesn't have side effects. So it, there's, no, there's no hard coded structure here. You can use whatever the heck you want. One thing that I'm thinking about and that I'm not sure about is like, how do we start allowing more condensed syntax? So. That would be kind of cool. And what I'm thinking is that if there is text that follows a, a, a link like this, that what gets created is I've got my arbitrary text node with all of my, my just stuff inside of it. And that gets linked to another node with an ID of my class, or not with an ID of my class, with, with text of my class. In fact, let's make this clear. Let's say and that gets linked to um, an ID class. Um, and what that would allow you to do is um, I think this is kind of a waste of time, but you could start to do at param my parameter my awesome parameter, um, and then later on down here you could be like at method. 
I'm a little I'm a little bit unsure about this. I mean, well, let's take a second to think about it. Um, so what this would give you as output is you would have a param that's linked to this thing. You would also have You'd also have a method designation that was linked to this thing. So we'd have id equals method, and that would be linked to another node with text my method. And what seems weird about this to me is for the parameter, you obviously want this to be text. For the method, you probably want this to be a name. This is a kind of weird structure. Um, so there's there's an unanswered question about what the most flexible way to do this is, but um, I I don't feel like I need to solve that problem right now. I'll need to follow solve it at some point over this weekend. Um, but for right now. I'm not too, too worried about it. Um, what's, what's the most basic version of this that I want right now? Because uh, we will set up a test, actually, so that I can just debug stuff really quick. Uh, so I am using distilled for testing. So um, let's just say suit.test uh, initial stuff. I don't really care about this. All right, cool. Uh, and let's grab you and stick you in here. So what do I what do I want to start off with? Um, I want to pull out a block comment and I just want to have that spit out a node as output. Um, so here is my block comment. Most basic designation, I, my ID. And we can come back through and clean up the rest of this crap later. Um, so I want to require so um, quick side note here uh, this is why node modules is awesome because I don't have to use relative paths here so let me show you what my directory structure looks like I have got let's save this quickly Edit updates. Um, I have got inside the root of this a SRC. Let's jump back into the correct one. Blarg. I can't wait for Space Max to drop this. <laughs> um, all right. So, yeah, so I've got in the root of my Dormouse directory uh, node modules. You already know about that. That's simple NPM stuff. I've got my SRC or SRC folder in here. And I've got a second node modules. So what NPM does when you require stuff, um, and this is not like a hacky thing, this is just normal documented expected behavior, is it starts from the directory you're currently in and works backwards. Um, if it can find the module there, it uses that module. Otherwise, if it hits a node modules folder anywhere, it checks inside that directory to see if it can find your path, and then it keeps on going backwards. So the fact that this is called node modules in your root directory is not like an accidental, just like weird naming convention. Node modules is the keyword that's used to say, okay, I have modules in here, I want you to load them. Uh, so what this allows us to do is inside of my tests, I can require anything from this node modules folder right here that I've highlighted. 
Uh, and I don't need to use relative paths, which is really, really incredibly handy for reorganizing code. It makes everything look cleaner. Um, helps a lot with bundling. There's, there's a whole bunch of really powerful stuff you can do with this. Uh, but that's just a side note. What do we want to do? Well, I have no idea what the door mouse API is going to look like, but let's just assume that it's a functional thing. Let's assume that I pass in a source and I get a JSON thing back. Um, what do I want that JSON thing to look like? Probably... Probably I just want like an array of, of I want like a, a root node or something that's like my docs. I, I want a root node that's my docs and I want it to have a couple of properties attached to it. So I want it to basically, I want it, I want it to have a couple, uh, probably an index. Does that make sense? Um, yeah, I'm actually not a hundred percent sure what I want this to look like. I'm thinking part of what I'm thinking is like, you would have an ID. You'd have you'd have a node with an ID, which is obviously optional. Um, and you'd have links, which would be because we want to index them as well. We want to have that nice fancy O of one lookup time. Although the 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 index should be at the base, right? The index should be at the base. Like what I really want is is what I, what I really want is actually something that looks like this. That that it's not you're not getting back a root node. You're getting back a nodes array and then you're getting back an object of indexes. Um And then the nodes would have a different syntax, I suppose. And then I, I, I guess at that point the nodes would have a different syntax. Yeah, it doesn't really matter. I can come back and clean this stuff up later. This doesn't have to be this doesn't have to be super, super clean. It doesn't have to be amazing. Um, I'm going to show you the really thrown together demo just as a proof of concept that this was possible and, and fairly easy to do. Uh, so I'm going to take a couple seconds and think about that. And then I will come back and do it.